Hey guys, Dr. Daphne Lim, board certified dermatologist. Today we'll be talking about Pico lasers, what they are and how they are used in both cosmetic and medical dermatology. So Pico lasers are not new. They were first used by the ophthalmologist many years ago. However, in 2015, the first generation of Pico laser first came out and that was called the Pico Shure. In 2016, I got my hands on one of those and up to today, I'm up to the third or fourth generation Pico lasers. What are Pico lasers? Pico lasers are special lasers because they use ultra short pulse durations. In other words, they deliver a lot of energy in a very, very small amount of time. And that's over a picosecond. Generally speaking, it's over between 300 picoseconds and all the way up to 900 picoseconds. So they're very, very powerful lasers with huge packets of energy over a short period of time. And the reason why we want that kind of energy is because we want to shatter or we want to target certain chromophores, which are basically targets in the skin. So pico lasers are used to treat primarily pigment. Generally speaking, because they treat primarily pigment, there are certain skin types that will have advantages over pico laser. That's why I say pico lasers are made, almost made for ethnic skin, compared to someone who's fairer. So it doesn't mean that if you're fair, you can't use pico lasers. If you're fair and you have certain conditions, for example, enlarged pores, acne scars, wrinkles, sun damage, you still can use a pico laser, but there are a lot more efficient lasers out there. Things like, for example, fractional CO2 or ablative lasers, as well as non-ablative lasers, for example, Fraxel. So Pico lasers, where the advantage is, is that it can treat darker skin types efficiently, but most importantly, safely. Safety is of utmost concern because for treating darker skin types, you can get what's known as post-inflammatory hyperpigmentation or paradoxical darkening because of that procedure. And hence why chemical peels, strong skincare, acids, as well as lasers in darker skin types have to be used with absolute precision and caution. So where Pico lasers come in is the treatment of pigment. So the pigment we can talk about, for example, age spots or sunspots, we call them lentigos or freckles. And in darker skin types, they can be very, very useful. So generally speaking, you only need between two to four treatments, depending on your expectations, your skin type, and also the setting. So number one, pigment, but pigment in darker skin types. If you have lighter skin types, for example, if you're Caucasian, European, the best laser probably in the context of age-related changes would be as simple as a nano laser, right? So you don't have to go for picos. Picos are a little bit of an overkill for that. Save your time, effort, money, other lasers in that context. When we talk about pigment due to melasma, which is basically hormonal pigment that you may get around the eye area, forehead or upper lip, that one is really tricky. A pico laser is not the game changer. In fact, nano lasers, old fashioned dermal toning lasers, probably give a better outcome and a lot cheaper compared to pico. So melasma, certainly if it's resistant, pico lasers may be considered, but go for the older fashioned Q-switch lasers. When it comes to pigment due to inflammation, so we're talking about post-inflammatory hyperpigmentation, for example, acne, burns, scratches, uh, surgical, anything where there's inflammation or post-inflammatory hyperpigmentation, this is where Pico lasers are the absolute game changer. So Pico lasers can treat pigment much more efficiently, both in darker skin types and also lighter skin types in that context. So for acne marks, certainly that's the way to go. In the context of acne scarring, scarring where there's actually a divot, which is called atrophic acne scars, I think if you actually get the scar early, a pico laser can help, but the flip side is that there are a lot of other things that can help, whether it be microneedling, fractional lasers, chemical peels, skincare, a whole heap of different stuff that can help. But then I think picos are really good for post-inflammatory pigment. When it comes to atrophic scarring, that's later. In other words, greater than four to five months after the actual acne itself. I think pico lasers are absolutely hopeless. There's a lot of other treatments that can give you better outcomes as well as much more cost effective. Now, one thing we haven't talked about is the cost of pico lasers because the laser device itself is somewhere between five to 10 times more expensive than other lasers. They can range from about 50,000 all the way up to 260,000 US dollars. So the reason why a lot of providers actually try to push 
everything for Pico is the return of investment. So if a laser costs as much as a house, everyone would try to get their return of investment as quickly as possible. And hence why there's so many other different modalities and different methods or different conditions to use Pico lasers for. But hopefully in this video, I will summarize what, in my opinion, are the best treatments for Pico. So when it comes to things like pores and rejuvenation, Pico lasers can be very useful. In the context of lighter skin types, if you're after skin rejuvenation that's more effective, I probably would not choose a Pico laser because it's a bit of a technological overkill. So for example, if you use things like chemical peels, microneedling, fractional lasers, if you have lighter skin types, they can make a huge difference in little treatments and more than likely less expense compared to Pico lasers. Where Pico lasers shine in the context of enlarged pores and in the context of age-related changes, whether it be wrinkling and mild dyscromia, in other words, pigmentation that's not due to melasma, is in the treatment of these conditions in darker skin types. So if you have my skin type or skin type three plus four or above, certainly would I use um, you know, something like a Fraxel on my skin? The answer is no, but would I use a Pico laser? The answer is absolutely, because they're a lot safer and they're a lot more efficacious. Importantly, they give you virtually zero downtime. So Pico lasers, darker skin type, that's the way to go. In the context of tattoos, Certainly Pico lasers can be effective, but it's not the game changer where you go from 14, 15 sessions to suddenly two or three sessions. It's not like that. You still will need uh, multiple tattoo treatments to actually uh, reduce your pigment from tattoos, but it might go from 14 to somewhere between seven to 10 treatments. So it possibly halves it, or at the very least, probably reduces it by about 30 to 40%. So that's where Pico lasers come in in the context of tattoos. In the context of birthmarks, I think for Superficial birthmarks, nano lasers are fine, but when you're treating deeper birthmarks, things like your otis, your itos, and all the complex um, dermal uh, pathology, Pico lasers may have an advantage over nano lasers. So guys, I hope you liked that video. At the end of the day, view every single laser or every single procedure as a tool. So if you, someone comes in, if you're trying to repair something, you don't actually every time grab your hammer or grab your spanner. You gotta actually pick something from the toolbox and then use that effectively to repair your particular problem. So use lasers as particular tools. Be very selective in how you implement that particular tool for that particular condition. Guys, I hope you like this. Please like, comment, share, subscribe. I'll see you later. Bye for now.